All right, guys, musky fishing 101. We're gonna talk rods, reels, lures, line, leaders, all of it, nets, tools, everything you need to have for musky fishing success as a beginner. Gonna walk you through the steps of picking out the right rod, the right reel, and talk about all the lures that you need to get out on the water. All right, guys, if we're gonna start musky fishing, we're gonna need a musky rod, and that means we're gonna need a musky reel as well. When it comes to rods for musky fishing, you can obviously see there's a huge variety. But what I like to do is have one rod that's gonna get most of everything done for me, sort of utilitarian, like the rod that I can fish, whether it's early in the season, late in the season, regardless of bait size. What I go with is the nine foot heavy, and it's a heavy action, and don't let that deter you, where it's not so heavy you can't throw small baits, but a heavy action nine foot shield rod. You can see this thing's telescoping, it's gonna fit in your car, it's gonna fit in your boat. The reason I go with a heavy action is we need that backbone for throwing larger lures, and we need that for hook setting power, especially if a, a fish's boat side or things of that nature, so you have the strength to fight a trophy class muskie. When you get into special purpose rods, the lighter stuff or the extra heavy rods, you know, it, it becomes a matter of that is for one specific presentation, where a standard heavy rod's gonna throw pretty much everything year round. So a nine foot heavy shield rod is what I'm gonna go with. If you're slightly shorter, if maybe you're not in the, the six foot range or a little bit smaller or, or a female angler, an eight six or an eight foot, foot rod might be more your speed, but a heavy action rod's gonna be the ticket under most circumstances. Then we get into what do we pair this with? What do we pair with a, a rod for musky fishing with? Obviously the reels. There's a huge variety of reels as well. And you'll hear gear ratio. Well, what does gear ratio mean? That means every time I turn this handle, the gears in here turn and it's how many revolutions, the speed, the rate of times that this spool was going to spin versus how many times I turn the handle. So it could be five turns to one handle turn or six and a half, somewhere in that neighborhood. In general, I want to have a six three to one reel. That's gonna be my best all purpose general musky fishing reel. Uh, you've got offerings from Akuma, Daiwa, Abu Garcia, and it's really gonna be a personal preference. What I recommend when you're picking a musky reel is to find something that's gonna fit in the palm of your hand. So the same size reels from two manufacturers that hold the same size of line could be a different size in your hand. Find something that's gonna be a good personal fit. This will help with fatigue. This will help you cast longer and stay in the game longer. And usually that's what it takes to catch a muskie. So it's gonna be beneficial. Just having a nice power handle and an easy to use pull on this, the, the line release that fits in your hand for casting is gonna save you a lot of time. So find a reel that fits your hand, generally in that six, three to one ratio. Like I said, there's tons of those reels and the guys at the muskie shop are gonna be able to help you with that. Find the right reel that's gonna fit you. The next question is, well, what line do I put on this? In general, most musky fishing is done with 80 pound braided line. 80 pound is gonna allow you to set the hook efficiently. It's going to allow you to fight trophy class fish without the fear of break off. We use 80 pound line while musky fishing so that we don't have to play the fish out as long. These are delicate creatures and we'll, you know, there's plenty of resources on handling and care for these things, but the heavier the line, that means the shorter the fight and that means we're gonna have more muskies catch later down the road. So 80 pound braid is where you wanna be. Also with larger lures, you don't have to worry about this line breaking on a cast off or anything of that nature so you're not losing your precious musky baits. I like Suffix 832, but the musky shop carries a ton of different brands of lime that is gonna work for you across any situation in a multitude of colors. You can get into colored lime, it doesn't matter, I don't think it makes a lot of difference to muskies, so check out the rod, reel, and line selection here at the musky shop. When it comes to lures, the bucktail is king in musky fishing, especially if you're a beginner. Now bucktails are a very easy lure to fish. You throw them out, you reel them in, and these blades open up, muskies, pike, Big fish can't stand them. Bucktails have probably caught more muskies than any other lure class uh, in, in the building. It's just historically been a producer. So it's a great place to start if you're a muskie angler that's new to the game. But if you look, there's so many bucktails. It's a, just a technicolor dreamscape of different things going on. You can't go wrong with some classic colors if you're a beginner. Whether it be a, a, just a, a simple black, and nickel, you know, this is a very large bucktail, but black and nickel has probably been the number one producer of muskies across the habitat range for years. 
So don't be intimidated by the amount of selection. A lot of that stuff is purpose built. So looking at these, you want to look at water color and clarity of where you fish. If you're fishing stained water, you want baits that are going to stand out in stained water, clear water. And there's a lot of tools and, and, and things you can utilize to figure this out, like the Muskie 360 app has a color clarity chart on there. So you can look at your waterways and figure out before you start buying. What differentiates bucktails is blade size. This is probably the most standardized bucktail in the game. This is called a double cowgirl. This bait is the baseline. We move up from this or down from this in general. If you're going to move down, you can get into a Joe Booker 500 series, which is a smaller blade, different configurations. We come to this and this is a baby girl, which is a smaller blade in general double blades and then lopsided blades. This puts off a different vibration. So if you want to have a small assortment, you could get eights, nines, all the way up to the big tens, and then even different configurations. That's a little bit of a learning curve to know when to apply these things, but keep it simple. A small selection of bucktails in different configurations is gonna get you set up for success when you're starting out. Crankbaits. Just like any other fishing you've done, crankbaits are used in the same way for muskie fishing. So if you're fishing for bass or you're fishing for pike, you're fishing for smallmouth, you're using crankbaits to get down where the fish are. Classic bait here is the Joe Booker Depth Raider. If I was starting off and I had my first crankbait, this is going to be it. It's got a big lip, it's caught tons of muskies, and it's a really easy cast and retrieve kind of bait. All of your crankbaits can be used in a cast and retrieve motion. Just throw it out, reel it in, throw it out, reel it in. We get into tactics and techniques. You can pick up what you're twitching, ripping, and there's a few different things. But definitely for a new angler, you want to have a nice little assortment of crankbaits. So a depth rater would probably be my number one go-to for a deep crank. You can get into, say, a Joe Booker shallow rater, which is a shallower running bait. It's going to accomplish some similar things to this at just different depths. You know, we've got slammer baits here they're slightly larger and a very varying size but twitch baits are super effective for muskies so adding a deep running crank bait and one shallow running twitch bait is going to get you where you need to be i prefer to just have you know basic colors you don't have to go crazy there's an array of colors just like bucktails keep it natural keep it basic and keep you know at least a deep running crank bait and a shallow running crank bait in your box there's nothing more exciting than a topwater muskie. You, it's, it's an amazing experience to get your first topwater muskie. And there's no better place to start than with prop baits. This is an absolute classic. The Joe Booker Top Raider has cut tons of big muskies. Simple bait to use. Turn the handle of your reel, it's gonna come in, plop, plop, plop. And these are built tough to handle big fish. And you've got some stuff from Lake X that's a little bit different flavor. A little bit bigger, they make some smaller baits. They're all going to accomplish the same goal. It's creating water disturbance. When you're pulling that bait in, you're reeling in, it's making a popping sound. Muskies love it. You got to be ready though. When a muskie comes out of top water, he's going to hump up behind that bait. You're going to see a bulge of water and you've got to keep your nerves down long enough to hook up. We've talked about bucktails. We've talked about crankbaits. Now we're talking about some serious muskie baits. For a new angler, big plastics is probably intimidating in some regard. You go, you really throw this bait and fish will eat it. This is an alpha dog. It is a big, soft plastic uh, option for musky fishing. But small fish will still eat these. Sometimes you need a big bait to get a musky's attention. Plastics are the way to do it. You need to consider these as a shock and awe presentation when it comes to your bulldogs. It can be finesse. You can throw these on weed edges. You can throw them at reefs. And sometimes you're just throwing it to move a tremendous amount of water. Again, when we talk about rods and reels, you're going to need that heavy action rod to be able to throw these baits, and you need a quick pickup reel and a good solid musky reel to be able to get that job done. So, when we talk about the swim baits, it's a little bit smaller presentation, but still slightly shock and all, still really going to get a lot of attention. This is the Poseidon from Chaos. There's also the Swimming Dog. There's a few different options on these. These are a great way to locate fish and just get them to bear down and eat. You can use these in a simple cast and retrieve method, throw it out, it's going to swim in. 
It's got a ton of wobble in the water. It's going to really get a lot of attention on a slow retrieve, a fast retrieve. You can pull them, rip them. You can reel stop, reel stop, and they're going to get looks from muskies. So you've got to add some big rubber to your tackle selection. And don't be intimidated by medusas and bulldogs. If you work them the right way, they're not hard to work. Glide baits, my personal favorite presentation. I've put a ton of big muskies in the boat with glide baits. And the two in my hand are probably the two easiest to work. This is a hail puppy, and this is a phantom. The six inch phantom soft tail and the hell puppy are just dynamite baits if you're a beginner muskie angler. Both are very, very easy to work. You can see that it just takes some small twitches of the rod to get this thing going left, right, left, right. This is a great trick for muskies that are negative or neutral. They're not hitting your bucktails. They're not hitting your topwaters. You need to show them something different. A glide bait is a huge addition to your muskie game. These two are super easy to work for beginners, even to expert anglers they produce. All right, guys, real quick, I'm just gonna work through the basic retrieves with some of the lures we talked about. So first off the bat would be a glide bait. Glide baits are sort of difficult if you're just getting going. The best way to work these rods is with a light tap of the rod. That's gonna get that bait working left to right. Add in pauses as you're doing this. So it's one, two, three, stop. One, two, three, four. And that bait is going to walk the dog set surface. Don't overwork them. You really want that bait to just zoom out there side to side and get it going. We did talk about, when in the shop, about big rubber. Again, another bait that some people might find lightly intimidating to work. The basic retrieve with big rubber is going to be ripping. It's not, a, it's not a hard rip, but we want to work that bait in a pooling fashion. We're going to rip it over, say, shallow weed. So throw it out. It's going to hit the water. We're going to pull, pick up the slack. Pull, pick up the slack. Pull, pick up the slack. You can work that bait in that fashion. That's a real basic way to get going, and it will put fish in the net. The other presentation is twitch baits, crank baits. You can always straight retrieve these baits, but adding a twitch in is really going to double your action, if not triple the amount of fish that you're going to see. So when you first throw this out, say you're throwing it to weeds, throw it to the edge, twitch, twitch, stop, twitch, twitch, stop, twitch, twitch, stop, twitch, twitch, stop, get it about halfway in, set yourself up for a nice straight retrieve, which will allow you to have a really clean figure eight at the end of that cast. And then last but not least, the bucktails. And we talked about that in the store, how these are a simple straight retrieve bait. All you need to do with your bucktail is make a good cast and engage the reel. I like baits that are gonna start easy in the bucktail world of things. So your maps, your different baits that are an easy starter. Just make a cast, throw it out. When it hits the water, start reeling. So that bait's not sinking into the weeds or getting stuck right off the rip. Just turn the handle. Don't stop turning because the blades are going to fall down. Just keep a nice, even turn of that handle to get you going. There's a lot of tricks we share in some videos here and some other resources. But in a general fashion, just keep the blades open and going. And that's the basics of bucktail fishing. Hope this helps and put some more some fish in your net for you this year and get you going in the game. All right, guys, now that we've figured out what rod and reel we're going to use and what line, we need to talk about leaders. Having a leader on your setup for musky fishing is sort of what makes musky fishing musky fishing. These are big toothy fish and we've got to have a strong leader. That's the main connection between you and your fish. So if you don't have a good leader, you're not going to be successful. There's two major types of leaders in musky fishing. There's fluorocarbon and there's wire. You can have a multi-strand wire that has the flex of fluorocarbon or a straight wire leader. And you go, how do I choose between the two of these? In general, you can fish most presentations. You can get the most mileage out of a straight wire leader. A fluorocarbon leader is going to be better for some of your jerk bait present or, or soft plastic presentations or twitch bait presentations. But right now, to start off musky fishing, I was gonna recommend that you focus on a straight wire leader. This will allow you to fish baits that are the side-to-side -side glide baits, as well as minnow-style baits, bucktails, big rubber, and all these different kinds of musky baits on the market. You, they can all be fished on this rather effectively. With fluorocarbon, 
and if it's a material that you want to use, you need to inspect that leader for frays and damage throughout the course of the day. But for a beginner, stick with a straight wire leader and you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this without any of the worries of another material. We need one more component and I think it's a big musky net. If you're going to target big fish, you need a safe way to get them in and handle them. You've got to have a big net. This is a clam net. This is a round net. It's got a deep bag on it. There's a lot of musky nets that are available from Frable, Clam, and, and these all feature really strong netting. Part of that is for the safety of the fish as well, where they have a rubberized coating that keeps hooks out of them, but you got to get a big net. Call the musky shop or get online. Anything that we sell at the shop is going to be a good musky net. You can't just take your old walleye net out there and expect to net a musky. This can happen to you when you got a muskie in your big net. You have to have the tools available to free the fish or free yourself. First on the list, really good high-end bolt cutters. These are pricey, but they're worth every penny. As you can see in that clip, you've got to have these to save you or the fish. And then when it comes to releasing them, long nose pliers and some jaw spreaders for a deep hook fish. These are the three non-negotiables on a musky boat. Long nose pliers, jaw spreaders, and a hook cutter. You have to have these every time. Now, when we get into the lures and the lure maintenance, we do want to have like a good hook file. There's tons. This is just a flat file to sharpen your hook. So adding that on the boat, those four tools with a good net is going to have you set up for success or anything that you might encounter on the water. Like, like and subscribe, subscribe my, my dudes. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> All right.